We are about to be blown away. We're about to be stimulated. We're about to be inspired. We're about to be forced to think. Okay. Madam Ivy, I, I just want to appreciate you for standing strong uh, after our brother is going. And uh, like I said in the video I sent to you, I wouldn't be here if this platform is not authentic. Uh, I turned down speaking engagement if the platform is not meant to help people become better. Okay? And uh, thank you for holding on strong. And please put your hands together for being alive today. I had trouble uh, coming up with what I was going to talk about today, but I said when I get here, I'm sure I I'm going to be inspired with what's going on to know how to direct my thought. Uh, first of all, Olua Femi, right? Uh, Olua Femi uh, inspired me today, and the young lady again, what's her name again? Is it again? El Zafan. And, and the other young lady that, the young lady, the girl that was here. Um, the theme is to create your world, okay? Uh, you might want to write this down first. We all live on the same earth, we don't live in the same world. We, we all live on planet earth, but we experience different realities. Uh, the AMD of the bank of Stanby KBC was talking about opportunities and stuff like that. You know, we think Nigeria is a poor country. That's not true. That may be your world, but that's not my world. We think America is a great country. That's not completely true, because that may be your world, and someone else living outside America is living a better world and in a better reality than some people living over there. So, but the question is, what are your poor or rich you live in a world so the, the issue is not creating your world the issue is creating the wealth in your world you didn't hear that because there's too many people who live in a different world right now uh my brother talked about boko haram right but they got money to sponsor terrorism how about a good idea without the fund to sponsor it i'm looking at this young man right now I'm just imagining 20 years ago, which other young man that was so vibrant, 20 years later, he didn't create the wealth to sustain the world. There's so many talent that have come and gone. So the issue is that how do you create wealth in your world? The concept that can sustain the ability to sustain the world you live in is the ability to control resources from the source of all things. I was born in 1973. I had polio one year, six months after I was born. Been unconscious for over 35 years. But last year alone, last year alone, 2021, during the lockdown in 2020, I had an idea, just an idea. That idea was converted to a product. And that product where had a marketing campaign around it, and that single idea raised about $1.5 million. But there's so many ideas that also came around the world, but never saw the light of day, because the person that holds the idea does not understand the discipline on how to create wealth. So today I'm going to try to, uh, there's a little too much trouble already in the house. Olua Femi, right? And, and um, uh, my brother, Dr. Obon King, uh, has caused a lot of trouble, and that trouble brings us together today. Please put your hands together for Dr. Obanke. So, on my, uh, can I get this slide now? I don't know if I'm going to be working with the person with this slide, or I can do it from here. Uh, yeah? Okay, so I'm clicking on my here, but uh, I've not seen it on the screen. So, write this down. Until what you know, becomes what you do, what you know is useless. Until what you know becomes what you do, what you know is useless. What impacts the world is not your knowledge. What impacts the world is your product. What impacts the world 
is your service. What impacts the world is your conduct. I, I saw something on the scripture, and that is in Isaiah, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 15. If you're familiar with the scripture, he said a poor man's wisdom was used to save a city. After the city was saved, the poor man was forgotten. So if you're poor in your world, your ideas are useless. So my theme is how do you sustain the world that you created? Are you with me? If you're following me, raise your hand. If you're following me, raise your hand. All right. There are, I don't know how many minutes I, want, I have. I am, I'm just a troublemaker. I don't go restriction by time, but I'll try to stop you when you can. And there are two categories of people in the hall and online. Write it down, two categories of people. There are here on this program. The first category are those that will hear me, and the second category are those that will listen to me. So the question is, what is the difference between hearing and listening? Write this down. Hearing is your bodily ability to observe sound, while listening is your mental capacity to record what you heard. Now I'm going to test it. I'm going to ask you to. I'm going to ask you to, to tell me what you've learned today. Most of you, by the time I'm done today and you go home after all this program, your wife, or your husband will ask you, "What did you learn?" Say that guy was too much. Say, but you went for tinkation on how to create your world. What wisdom did you learn? Say that guy was fantastic. So. Hearing is your bodily ability to observe sound, while listening is your mental capacity to record what you heard. Now write this down. You hear with your ears, but you listen with your mind. By the time I'm done today, and until what you hear becomes a picture, you can never practice what you hear. Are you following me? What you, you listen, listen with? with. So, 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 hearing hearing is your what you listen, listen with? with? What you what hear you with? with? Right. right. I want you to touch, you touch your ear. Touch your earlobes. Ear now, now, what does it look like? like? It looks, it looks like, like a satellite like dish. dish. Do you know if I cut the earlobes, you hear woo sounds? So the essence of your earlobes is to collect waves of sound. And until these sounds become intelligible, what your brain can interpret it, what you heard is a sound. And that's why it's possible to be physically here and mentally absent. Do that make sense? So I'm going to ask a question. Do you have a microphone in the hall? Do you have a microphone in the hall? Do you have a microphone in the hall? All right, now. All right, yes, yeah, so I'm going to ask you a question. Please don't answer. Don't, ra don't raise your hand, uh, but don't answer the question until I ask you to raise your hand. If you know the answer, keep it to yourself. I want you to take the microphone, and I want you to give it to... To my, my sister, sister right there. Right there. Right there. No, 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 no. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. ma'am. How are you today? I'm good. Thank what you. What is my last name? If, you, if this is the first time you're seeing me and you know my last name, this is the first time. Raise your hand. This is the first time you're seeing me and you know my last name. All right? Right. What's my last name? Don't tell, don't tell him. Don't tell him. Yeah, what's my last name? I'm sorry, I don't know. Okay. okay. Was my last, last name we mentioned here? here. Was it mentioned here? If this is the first time you are meeting me, and this is the first time you are hearing my name, and you can remember my last name, can I see your hands up? All right. Take the microphone and give to my sister at the back. No, but yes, yeah, but it was mentioned here. Was it on flyer? You saw it? Was it here? Okay. Yes. Give it to her. What's my last name? Or may or go. Now listen to if my last man was a million dollars, was is two of them available in the same place it was mentioned? If it was an opportunity, who would get it? But where two of them are available, there's so many things available around you, but you never listen. Every Solution you need for every problem, you've always come in contact with it, but you never always listen to it when it was just a circumstance. 
Write this down. Life is designed, watch this. Life is designed to give you a solution before it gives you a problem. What did I say? Life is designed to give you a solution before it gives you a problem. Why do people still struggle? When the solution came, what did you do? You never listened to it. Now I'm going to give you an example. How many of you can tell me, now listen to this, every question you have in any exam you take was always given in the class before the question came. Do people still fail the exam? Clap for yourself. If you go to class one, right ma'am? At the end of the semester, there's, there's questions, exams, right? People still fail it, right? Why? The answers to the questions came as a teaching, not as a test. So every single day, you are hearing solutions. Every single day, you're hearing solutions. That is why, as well, the way life is designed, life is designed to give you a parent before you become a parent. What are the parents supposed to do? Parents are supposed to give you answers before it's your turn to perform. If you've learned something already, raise your hand. If you've learned something already, raise your hand. If you have, now I'm going to ask you a question. Take the microphone back over here. Don't tell me I was inspired. Microphone. Give it to my brother right there. Tell me what you've learned already. Matter of fact, tell me what you've learned yourself. What you've learned. Have you learned anything so far? Yeah, yes, it's this session right now. Tell me what you've learned. What does that mean? Even though we are on the same planet, we have the same sun. Okay, right. Just put your hands together for my sister right there. All right. Now write these down. Wealthy men, rich men negotiate. Middle class bargain, poor men beg. Rich men negotiate. Middle class bargain, poor men beg. Remember, my, my topic is creating the wealth in your world. Because everybody's living in a world. The people that live in Makoko are living in a world. There's a reality in their mind that is playing at the physical reality. There is people who live in some nice places with a lot of resources. It's also their world. So everyone is automatically creating their world. But what you're not creating is the wealth to sustain the world. Does that make sense? Now, to create wealth in your world, you need three levels of knowledge. Write it down, three levels of knowledge. You need three levels of knowledge to create the wealth in your world, right? Number one, you need the first level of knowledge, which is revelational knowledge, which is your knowledge that comes from your relationship with divinity, your relationship with God, and that relationship with divinity, that relationship with God comes in terms of revelation. And that's why all the greatest people in the world who build something phenomenal are always people who are operate at the highest level of knowledge, which is inspiration. And the lowest level of knowledge is assumption. The highest level of knowledge is not logic. Because if it's logic, if, if someone tells you right now, this young man right now tells you he's the biggest person in the world, logically, I might check his bank account, there's nothing to support that claim. So by logic, you can't believe it. Factually, you cannot believe he's, he's what he's saying because there's no money in his bank account, his father is not a billionaire, and he is telling you he's one of the biggest, richest people in the world. So logically, it doesn't make sense. So the, the foundation of knowledge for world creation is revelation of knowledge. And you get, and you get that, that from your relationship, relationship with God. God. Now listen to this. The ultimate expression of revelational knowledge is vision, which is infinite expression of possibility. The second level of knowledge is theoretical knowledge, which talks about strategy, process, methodology, critical path analysis. So it's not enough to have vision, of possibilities 
without having the strategy to get it done. And when I say critical path analysis, I want you to pay attention. I don't want you to become a wealthy man at the age of 90 when your body cannot even enjoy the process of enjoying the money. I don't want you to be so visionary that at the point of 115 years, you want to buy a Ferrari. So critical path analysis strategy, the word strategy means the most advantageous position. So critical path analysis is finding the most effective, efficient way of getting results when it matters. Twenty twenty two, I want to raise ten million dollars in revenue. Ten million dollars. Twenty 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 twenty, I develop an idea. Twenty twenty one was to build a prototype of that idea and sample it in a small market to see the efficacy and the usefulness of that idea in the market so that I can multiply it in 2021. Strategy is finding the most effective, efficient way of getting results with little resources and what is important. So it's not enough to have vision, as it's important thing to have strategy. And the last level of knowledge, not the least, is experiential knowledge, which has to do with having the right competence to execute the vision and the strategy. So I see people all the time, everybody talking about big things, and then the big things begin to fizzle over time because the strategy is frustrating that and coming out when it matters. I have seen people who have great ideas, they lack competence to get it done. I have seen people with powerful competences employed by people lesser than them who had bigger visions. Oh, you guys are now following what I'm saying. Are you following what I'm saying? As a consultant, I have consulted for people who didn't go to school in terms of academics, employing people with PhD, and the people that didn't go to school don't want to meet the PhD because they'll be intimidated. They say that we should do the talking. We send um, advert, advertorial on Guardian, and you see someone with 25 years of corporate experience coming to, to look for a job in someone who doesn't have such corporate experience but is a big thinker. Oh, you didn't get what I'm saying. And then after 25 years in big Fortune 500 companies and after they have been fired or resigned and you're still putting a black to apply and the person employing you is, is younger in age because they're a big thinker. In other words, competences can hold you back when you lack vision. Make sense. So, how many levels of knowledge? Number one. Where'd you get it from? From your relationship. Your relationship. Okay, when I say relationship, you see, people confuse the Bible as the Word of God. The Bible is a documentation of the Word of God. In the it of itself, it's not. It's your relationship with that divine reality that inspires your mind. There are so many Christian religious. Uh, that's uh, the way you call that. CRK. How many of you did CRK? And our CRK teachers, we are not born again. How many of you? So, so cramming the Bible does not confirm that you have the Word of God. Two different realities. Oh, come on. This is where you're supposed to clap now. You get the point now? You get the point? So, so inspiration is what comes from relationship. So. What is the second level of knowledge? What does it talk about? Strategy, process. Now, let me tell you. Vision as a phenomenon is a spiritual phenomenon. That's why you can say today, I'm a billionaire. And that will be true, vision-wise. But for that vision to enter the reality of Earth, Time and space must happen to it. Oh, I didn't hear that part. So instantly, you can change, but it takes time to manifest that change. So that brings me to the first step to creating wealth, which is visioning. Write it down. The first step to creating wealth is having a vision for your life. Okay? Having what? A vision for your life. And I, I'm purely concerned about this young man here, Olufam, Olu, Oluwa, 
Oluwani Femi and the other young lady. I'm concerned about them. You see, you see, every old people here don't care about what I'm saying. In fact, the older you are, the more, the, the more you doubt what I'm saying. The younger you are, the more you believe me because you still have a lot of time on your side, right? You didn't hear what I'm saying. <laughs> you know why? Write this down. It takes knowledge to understand knowledge. If I say, if I tell you right now, I don't know if, if, if someone is, is about 75 years old. I tell a 75 year old man, you're going to be a billionaire. <laughs> Depends on my son, what are you talking about? If I tell a 20 year old, you're going to be a billionaire, the chances of that child believing me is higher because this person at 75 years has ingrained a mentality that does not support what I'm saying. So 90% of the time, it's not what you're saying, it's not true. People don't have enough knowledge to agree with what you're saying. So, so in other words, life does not reward you according to your effort. Life rewards you according to your definitions. Life does not reward you according to the efforts you make. Life rewards you according to the quality of knowledge that drives the effort you make. So which means two people can be in the same business, in the same country, with the same resources. The outcome is different. The same Buhari, the same uh, Sangwolu, the same Lagos, the same business opportunities. But some people are making a kill, creating wealth. Some people are, are, are wasting away in penury. The same circumstance, the same tools, different orientation. So, so put it this way. Life de rewards you according to your definitions. Now, watch me. I've been on crutches for 35 to 40 years old, right? Now, 40 years, right? I'm 48 this year, right? I've been on crutches for over 35 to 40 years. On crutches. If wealth is created by physical effort, how many of you think I'm going to be a wealthy man? No. That's why poor people look for cash. Rich men look for knowledge. And the last time I checked, those who look for cash don't have it. Do I make sense? Look at me. I'm just a, 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 class, a, class, a, class, a class case. 1973 born, one year, six months after I was born, I had polio. And about five years or eight years after that, I got into crutches. So if life is this physical, you know, how the pack of muscles you have and how physically strong you can be. Matter of fact, you don't, you don't travel the world with your legs. You travel the world with your mind. You walk around your garden with your legs. Do, do I make sense? Okay, I'm, I'm trying to learn because there are certain things I want to teach. I need to give you some pre-knowledge before I teach it. Because if I, give, if I don't give you this pre-knowledge, but I teach it, you're going to process it from something you already know before. If I'm making sense to you, raise your hand. If I'm making sense to you, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Remember, it's not about creating your world now. It's creating this wealth to sustain your world. Because when you have the wealth, nobody can call you bluff. When you become wealthy, so many people who don't like you will find a way to love you because without the wealth, they can't do that. So listen to this, right? I was teaching knowledge anatomy someplace, knowledge anatomy, uh, what, what constitutes knowledge. When someone is knowledge of what do you mean? And, and this woman was a permanent secretary of Lagos State. She was in that particular class. She said, oh, God, this is crazy. She can you come and speak to our alumni. I had a, a class of 45 professors, PhD holders, and they are all retirees. That I want you to come and speak to us about knowledge anatomy. So I walked into the class. I was 35 years at the time. So I walked into the hall, and there were about 45 PhD holders in the class. And all of them are in their 70s and their 60s. So in my usual troublemaking capacity, I walked into the hall, 45 PhD holders, and I said to them, if you are an old man or old woman here, I want you to stand on your feet. Guess what? They all stood up as old people. I said, I do not speak to old people. I want you to leave the hall right now. How do you think they felt when they heard said that? They looked at the woman that brought me, so who brought this little brat to come and insult us? 
I said, I know you're angry at me about what I said. Please, before I leave the hall, I want you to bring your phones out. They brought their phones out. I said, please, I type the word old. They all typed the word old. What came out as the meaning of the word old was antiquated, out of use, useless, weak, non relevant. As they were standing, I said, any old person keeps standing, they all sat down. And I'm saying you're 65 and 70, and you're a PhD holder, and this is the first time you're getting to know the meaning of the word old. How many other things have you held on to that was wrong when you were 15, and you've held on to it at the age of 75? In other words, what I found out, the greatest obstacle to success is no longer ignorance, it's the illusion of knowledge. Because if you truly know, you'll be wealthy. So don't tell me about money if you don't have it. Don't tell me about wealth if you're not creating it. Let's cut up all this argument and all this PhD we are talking about. I've attended Harvard. I have attended all of these things. Now, but that's fine. And, and I, we live in the material world. The only way you can confirm spiritual strength is confirm it with the material relevance. Because you live in a physical world right now. Remember, the revelational knowledge, if you go and read your Romans chapter 1, verse 20, it says, For since the creation of the world, his invincible attribute is clearly seen by the things that are made. Which means your resolve testifies and validates your dreams. If you don't like me, now raise your hand. If you don't like me, raise your hand. If you love me, raise your hand. Does it matter? doesn't matter. Listen to this. A poor man wants to be liked. A rich man wants to be respected. And the only way you can get respect is to create results. Period. So, what is my point? Your definition determines your outcome. Say it again. Not your, not your effort. Everybody's making an effort. Kekemad is making effort. Isn't he making effort? Have you seen Dango drivers? Are they making effort? You are making effort too. Dangote is making effort. The bigger in the street is making effort. So the effort is a common denominator. Knowledge is a differentiator. The difference in man is in the quality of thought they think, but in the DNA they carry. All men are born equal except the kind of thought they think. So, so, anything you cannot define overwhelms you. Anything you can define, you can modify. Oh my God, you guys are losing me right now. Okay, okay, you know what? I'm going to stop. You guys are looking at me crazy. I'm going to walk out of here. Oh no, come on now, come on now, come on now. You're looking at me crazy, right? You're looking at me crazy? Oh, are, you, are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? I can cut your butt legs, cut your hands, and you can still command the whole world with those who have legs and hands who don't want to think. Olu, I want you to stand up. I want you to sit down. I want you to stand up. What did you stand with? Say it louder. That's a lie. I want you to sit down. I'm going to talk to you to stand up again, but I want you to refuse my instruction. I'm going to ask you to stand up. I want you to refute my instruction in your mind. I want you not to listen to me. I'm going to speak to your leg alone to see if your leg is going to stand without your mind saying yes. What are you talking about? So I'm going to ask you to stand. I want you to say no in your mind. Don't listen to me. Stand up. Stand up. Leg, stand up. Now I want you to wheel to stand. Stand up. What, what do you stand with? Your legs and hands are accessories. They do what your mind says. The unfortunate thing about the mind is it can never save your life until it's developed. So you can have a brain without a functioning mind. Dead men have brain, they don't have mind. Dogs have brains. If you take a dead man and open his skull, you're going to see brain. Doesn't mean he has a mind. The you don't touch the mind. The evidence of mind is what it produces. So show me what you're producing. I can show you have a mind. Sit down. 
and what you're sitting with. Correct. If I stop here, you're blessed. So your definitions define your reality, not your effort. So forget this effort and working hard, damn it. It's not hard work, it's soft work. I work hard for my money. I mean, you brag about, about labor. They even said dignity of labor. That's not dignifying labor. The people that talk about labor as dignified are only people who rely on technicalities and techniques. But when you become a master of the laws, of the earth. You can control the dynamics of the earth without being physically involved in the operation of the earth. That's why one person can have about 10 companies and it's not functional in any of them physically. Where do you live from? Now I'm so freaking successful, people think purchase is a swag. You follow me? So, so your definition is what determines the outcome, not the effort in itself. The effort in itself is a carrier of definition. So if your fundamental concept of wealth is wrong, no matter how hard you work on the wrong concept, you're not going to get the result you desire. So when your concept is defined and is controlled by you, you can alter any reality that you don't like. The problem is, you learned from your parents, and most of our parents were not rich people. They were a symbol of authorities in our life, but they didn't have the result to teach us. And that's even though most of our parents cost more damage in our life than anybody, we still love them. Don't you love your mama and your papa? Oh, uh, okay. But go check their life. They don't have the things you need, but we still love them because they are a symbol of authority. So you respect your parents, but listen to me. Okay, you guys don't like me right now. Uh, you know, I, mommy, I'm going to cross over here. Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you. I'm going to be a nice guy. You're going to clap for me. I'm going to walk away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah? So how many of you are smart and intelligent, but you are as broke as hell? But if I, if I do debate now, you kill me. You finish me with your logic and all that. But the reality of creating and controlling the wealth of the earth, you don't have it. So, so, there are two levels of definitions. Two levels of definitions. The first one is statutory definition. Remember, the key is definition. The key is, the key is not effort. It's not working hard. It's not smartness. It's none of that. It's your ability to control what defines the narrative of the world. If you can, 90% of what you're running with is other people's narratives. People have defined things. English dictionary is not enough to define your reality. You're supposed to define the reality of what doesn't exist, and English dictionary is supposed to add it. Oh, you didn't get what I'm saying? It's just like competence. How many of you have heard the word mind competence? Doesn't exist. Which is your ability to create the world you want and find those who are experts to do and do it for you without you having to be physically involved. It just it is just in the dictionary, but that's what I do. Why is Jamal? Jamal, how you doing? That's my boy. Please, please stand up. Stand up. That's the chip of the old block, right? Okay, well, you, you don't have your phone up school, right? I sent you a text the other time. All right, sit down. If you've learned something already, raise your hand. If you've learned something already, raise your hand. Can I get the microphone? Just to be sure. Just to be sure that I'm not wasting my damn time. Just to be sure. Yes, 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 yes. Talk to me. First of all, let me tell you this. If you live in Nigeria, the chances of you becoming a millionaire in dollars like me is 0.009%. I'm telling you, go, go check the statistics. There are about 1.2 billion people in Africa. We have 139,000 millionaires out of 101.2 billion. There are 333 million people in America. There are over 20 million millionaires. So the chances of being successful as a millionaire in the United States is higher because of the odds are first of all treated in your favor. But then, if you live in Africa, the odds are already against you. So you, some of the things you need to learn is how to change the odds before you can start the race. Come on, talk to me now. 
There are, there are some system, systemic disadvantages already crippling your capacity to start doing well. So you have to deal with those systemic disadvantages then before you can even come in the, in the regular race in the world. All right? Does it make sense? Am I making sense to you guys? Right. So, what you, so if you've learned something, can I see you? Who can tell me? Who can tell me? Does somebody need to talk to me? Yes. Microphone to anyone, yes. What you, tell me what you've learned. Remember, if what you say doesn't make sense, I'm going to ask you to leave the hall. Don't tell me that you are blessed. Don't say that. I already know. Um, Paramount for me is that I've learned that um, if my mind is in tune with me, I have the capacity to conceive what I want in my imagination because of a vision and then have it become my reality. That's to say, first of all, if I get the knowledge that is from the divine, like you said, I can now translate that to what becomes my life if I put myself to it. I think that's super important. So you can see why he's struggling to try to explain his words. Listen to me, when you're five years old, you should have at least three million words in your vocabulary. At the age of five, you should have at least three million words in your vocabulary. That's, that's a difference between intelligence and brilliance. Everybody is intelligent. You have the mental capacity to understand something, but not everybody has enough vocabulary to express it. And the world pays you for expression, not for understanding. And I'm sure most of us, well, not, 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 the, not the Ubon King tribe, you guys are different. Some people I've met have never read a book in over two years. There's some people's brain, if you open it, you see cobwebs there. Sir, please sir. drop yeah. your mic, sir. I'm sorry? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 so I'm speaking, my words are like virus. They're saying, I say you can be powerful and successful. They, they, they are, they are both powerful and successful. Their brain will check the word powerful and successful. It doesn't exist in your life. And I say, what do you understand? Your brain is looking for vocabulary to explain what you already understand. I say, you know that, uh, so when you said that, uh, that uh, you know, you, you have to define it. And you know why? Because you, the vocabulary, the lexicon to give third, to give expression to those thoughts are, are, are not there. Who understood what I'm saying? And some people never raise their hand anymore. Sir, my guy has been raising his hand. Yes, yes, yes give, it to my, give it to my brother. He doesn't have web. With my brother. My brother, don't, don't disappoint at all. Um, yes. Good afternoon to you. Um, so I'm a podcaster, and my name is Tosin. And I just got to know that I have been doing all of these things subconsciously because I have a podcast that is hearing in 16 countries. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Can you speak slowly? Yes, yeah, so I said I, I have been doing all of these things you said today subconsciously because I have a podcast hearing in 16 countries, five continents. And I can, I can, 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 do you understand him? Can I just said I have a podcast. Speak slowly. Okay, so Ra write this down, write this down. Speed is useless without direction. Keep listening, keep listening. Speed, write this down. Speed is useless without direction. And direction is useless without destination. Speed is useless without what? And direction is useless without destination. So basically your destination is for me to understand what you're saying. So you want to speak in a language that makes sense to me because if you speak well and eloquently and it makes no sense, you've spoken nothing. Okay. So why he's practicing to speak well, give the microphone to someone who, who, who I don't know what I'm going to speak better. Can I go ahead? Yes, yes, give it to you. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes. So I have learned that definition is all about what I need to get to my destination. That if I can define it, then I can get there. And I was amazed when you said that the if, if, if I don't practice what I know, what I know is useless. That's why I'm Please put your hands together for that, right? Appreciate it. See, I'm not a bad guy after all. I said 
Poor people are nice, right? Now listen to this. If you're a nice person here, raise your hand. Uh, we don't know how to. Please, can someone Google the meaning of the word nice? Nice means stupid. Now, I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. The word, the root word for nice means stupid. No, hit, hit me up. Hit me up. Check it. Check it. Check it right now if you can. The root word for the word nice. You can't be nice and be successful. You can be disciplined and be successful. You can be generous and be... But being nice is trying to please every and anybody around you without going towards your goal. It's impossible to go towards your goal and please every single person in your life. Not possible. It's not possible. Everybody will have to like you. No. Check the word nice. Check it. I want you to check it. It means stupid. If you found it, let me know. You found it? Give her the microphone. Give her the microphone. Because sometimes you think I'm the one creating this. this. No. Give her the microphone. What does nice mean? Nice comes from the Latin word nestius, meaning ignorance. Please put your hands together for the nice people here. It's just not, you can't be that. You can't be nice. But you took those words out of context. So definitions is what has made people to become successful or not. Remember, anything you can define, you can modify. Anything you cannot define overwhelms you. And there are two levels of definitions. The first level is statutory definition, which means defining something for what it is, regardless of what you think it is. Can I take it again? Statutory definition is defining something for what it is, regardless of what you think it is. The second level of definition is defining something by reason of use, by reason of application. Now, I'm going to show you something that has been keeping a smart, intelligent person broke and poor. Let me show it to you right now. If you're a Christian, raise your hand. Good. If you're a Muslim, raise your hand. Muslim? Any Muslim? Okay, great. Okay, great. Okay, great. Yeah, great. Sir, what is this? Crutches, right? Is that crutches? Great. If you're a Christian, what is this? It's crutches. If I take this to China, what is it? Crutches. What if I take it to Japan? What? Is, okay, any, all the women here, raise your hand. Women, raise your hand. Women. What is this? Men, raise your hand. What is this? You see, statutorily, we all agree in all races, in all gender, in all philosophy of what this is. So which means I can teach globally if I have a statutory meaning of a concept. Which means I can talk to a Chinese person if I have a statutory meaning of a concept, right? Now come here, come here, come here. What did you call this? Crutches. Now watch this. If I use this and break his head, what is it now called? Weapon. What if the first time you came in contact with this, you saw it being used in breaking somebody's head? What would you call it for the rest of your life? So what if you have a contextual meaning of a global concept? What if your understanding about wealth is what you saw from your dad and your mom and you took it as the meaning when the context of meaning is not in what it's supported to be? Oh, come on, talk to me, guys. We don't know what to say, to guys. Go sit, go sit down. What if, what if the first time ever, the first time ever you saw this, you saw me using it to press television to put, on, put it on, what would you call it? Remote. And that's the first time you saw it. And then you walk away. You never knew what it's designed for. You use the contextual meaning to change for the statutory meaning. Oh, come on, talk to me. So it's not about what you know. It is who interprets what you know. Do you have wealthy people in your life who are successful? Who give meaning to what you see? Which means the same thing happens to us all, but it's not the same interpretation that we all give it. If my children go to school, something happens to them, I interpret it. So which means your brain has to function. Write it down. Your brain has to function. The first function of your brain is memory. The second function is imagination. Memory is the ability of your brain to receive information, store information, and encode that information for the tree bow for future purposes. Write this down, write it down. This, this is crazy. Now, let me tell you why a poor man cannot be in my class. Because, see, laziness is not a physical thing. Did you write it down? Laziness is not a physical thing. Laziness is a mental thing. 
if it cannot read and hold a thought long enough to convert that thought into an idea and turn that idea into a product for some mankind, you're a lazy person. There are so many hard-working, lazy people. Oh, you don't get what I'm saying. That's, that's, they can't even write something down. They can't even hold. Once it's, it's deep knowledge, they, they black out. But if you say, let's pack this and move it out here, they'll just show up right now. And they confuse hard work with being smart. So the first thing I want to talk about is, is how do you define vision? We determine what vision will be possible in your life. Uh, my time is up. Oh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to stop here today. Please put your hands together for yourself. Thank you. So, see you in 2023, the winning edge. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Dr. Ogo Tuku. Wow. Sincerely, sir, please don't go yet. We have something for you, sir. Okay. Quickly, um, Ambassador. Yes. Ma, we don't even know where to start from now because uh, we can't be nice. <laughs> We are no longer nice. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Very, wow, very such an amazing much. session. It's been a revolutionary session. And in fact, this is the sort of session that you immediately you get back, you need to get on YouTube and yes. watch again. Take time and listen again. Yes. So that because these concepts are really deep. So you need to grasp it so that you can draw value from it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's put Sandra for Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, okay. Oh, Lord. <laughs> So whilst that the picture is going on, you the know when when the person I even the photo pity, session. No way, the person I even pity now is nice, the musician. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Let's just move. Yeah, let's move on. All right. You know what I say each time I come to conferences like this. I say it's beautiful to hear these things. Faith is built when you hear, right? Mm. Faith comes by hearing. It's not enough. Are you sure, doctor? Application. Hold on, yeah, doctor. Do you believe in faith is built? <laughs> <laughs> By you have, you have to uh, uh, she, had um, to, she had to tell me her definition of faith. Uh -huh. So it was Mary Jane that was speaking. Me, I'm, I'm just cast boy. Oh, Mary Jane, too, Oh, Mary Jane and I, we came separately. I'll come yeah. and see you. I'll In see me. you and then we'll sit down. Mary Jane, don't worry, just continue. Don't mention faith too, before we check for the root word. What am I can't check with you? Huh. Oh, God, please put your hands together for yourselves. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so, on behalf of the <laughs> King Foundation, in fact, mm -hmm. this has been disruptive. There are so many concepts that we have held on to for so long, <laughs> and now we have to rethink them. Right. Thank you very much Thank for you. disrupting our minds at this event. Thank we you. are happy to Thank have you here on board. God bless you. Thank you. Hey, God. Maybe just move on with this program. I can't even let let all of us start going home. <laughs>